Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I am your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews and on-site training. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to partially celebrate the fact that I now officially have over 100,000 subscribers on this channel, but also talk about something that I have never really seen other YouTubers that I follow talk about, and that is, what does this actually mean? Like, how does the channel change after 100,000 subscribers, and how much money does the channel actually make for me? Now, I think there's a good chance that you might not be a regular subscriber if you are watching this episode, so I just want to point out that I am using Compiler Explorer, which is an online programmer's tool for compiling and executing code across a very wide range of languages, and this is the most excellent tool that was started by Matt Godbolt, and I am, of course, abusing it here and using it simply as a text editor. So we're going to cover a few different things. Now, I say how much is 100,000 subscribers worth, so we'll discuss the specific growth of the channel and how long will it take me to get to 1 million. We will discuss the direct and indirect revenue from the channel. Now, I'm going to draw a line at where exactly I'm going to stop talking about my personal finances. So direct revenue, that's YouTube ad revenue. Sponsorship revenue, the Amazon affiliate links that I tend to have in each video description and my most excellent Patreon supporters. Now, the indirect revenue I am not going to go into specifics about because partially, yes, the channel does give me a way to advertise these products and services, but there's no direct way to correlate exactly who learns about me and my products from this YouTube channel. So while the channel definitely does drive the indirect revenue, I'm not going to get into that specifically. So I will show you the direct numbers for my YouTube ad revenue. Uh, sponsorship revenue, that's a little bit of a tricky thing, and my Amazon affiliate revenue. And then I will get less specific when I talk about Patreon, and then I'm just going to mention the fact that yes, I do get book sales and training and contracting revenue somehow indirectly from this channel. Now let's start by looking at this subscriber count, and this is the raw numbers that take us from the very beginning, episode one, through our current almost 400th weekly episode. And you might notice something as I did when I was looking at it, and that is the fact that we can draw two almost straight lines. So we have this line that was at the beginning of the channel's development. And we have this line that occurred in some mysterious break. Now, we can see that the second line is at a steeper slope than the first line, but we might not know exactly why we got this hump in the channel's history, and longtime fans of the channel might have an idea what that was. But let's go ahead and take a quick look now. This is my YouTube dashboard, and it might be a little unexpected to you to note this chart right here. This is the big spike that really changed things for the channel's growth. And if, again, you are a longtime viewer of the channel, you wouldn't be surprised at all to see that this is the porting Doom to C++ live stream, which has had so far 247,895 views. 
which might make you wonder, well, how much money did that earn for Jason? Because that was an epic live stream that took an awful lot of time and has had many views. And that would be an outstanding question. So we can, on any individual video, dig into this and see that since this video has been published, it earned $106. Now, $106 only because this video had a copyright strike against it. It turned out that the music that I used for intermissions, even though I was told that it was public domain music, ended up getting a copyright claim against it, and therefore I was able to receive no ad revenue whatsoever from this video. So you can see here this exclamation mark that there's a copyright strike. Now I did not have any direct way of refuting this copyright strike. So all of that revenue is actually from people who gave me tips during the stream. Now, this is the kind of thing that is a little disappointing to see when you have a channel like this. My next most video has 169,000 views. This is intro to CMake. This is episode 78. I've done much better episodes on CMake since then. But let's go ahead and see what this outlier, this 169,000 views video makes. And we'll look at since the upload of it. So that's uh, $545. That's not too bad, but that is for a video that was published six years ago, almost exactly, in fact, six years ago. Over the lifetime of a video, it's going to have somewhere in the like six to 8,000 view range. So let's go ahead and click on one of these 8,000 view videos, and we can see that this video has earned me $16 in ad revenue. That is actually fairly typical. It's about $16 to $20. Now, part of the reason for this on my channel specifically is I know a lot of you use ad blockers, so that drastically limits how much ad revenue I'm going to make from these, which probably then has you wondering, um, how much do I actually make per month in ad revenue? And I said I would go into specifics, so let's go ahead and look at that right now. This right here is pretty typical. And you can even see the green checkbox. I make about $191 per month in ad revenue from YouTube ads. So that's across the entire channel, keeping in mind. So that is my monthly ad revenue. Let's just call that approximately $200 per month. Oh, I promised that I would go into channel growth. So let's look at that now. So I did a little bit of data analysis and a little bit of average smoothing. Now, what we have here on the first chart is the average new subscribers per month. And we can approximately draw a trend line uh, you know, it goes up a little bit from there, but let's just say it's in the five to 700 new subscribers per month ballpark. And then we can draw another line that's here. That's approximately a thousand new subscribers per month. And then we have this big outlier, which was that doom stream that we talked about before. So that had an actual significant impact on the channel. It's the closest thing to going viral that I have done. And there's a clear distinction from before the doom stream and after the doom stream, as far as my average new subscriber count goes. So I'm getting about a thousand new subscribers per month, which we had already seen that on the dashboard here, 1,062 subscribers in the last 28 days. So for how long to 1 million subscribers, I currently have 100,000. So I need 1,000, 1,000. And that means another about 900 months to get to 1 million subscribers, unless I have another outlier that occurs that increases the growth of this channel. Okay, sponsorship revenue. Um, that's not really a secret. If you were to contact me, I would tell you that I am going to charge $600 per episode if you want to sponsor an episode of C++ Weekly. And I have had a few people do that, but it's actually been very few people that have actually signed up to do sponsorship on this channel uh, to the tune of 
less than 10 episodes in total out of 400. Now, I have gotten a lot of offers from companies that would have absolutely no relevance whatsoever to this channel, and I have turned those down. So we can effectively say over the last 80 months that I've been doing this channel, that that is about $75 per month here. Now, Amazon affiliate revenue, and I do have links in every single episode to books that I recommend. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at that. Uh, this one is actually almost a little bit humorous. So this has been now the first eight months of 2023, and I have made $86.88 in affiliate revenue. Let's just call this $10 per month. Okay, so as far as the specifics go, we could say that I am earning approximately $285 per month in YouTube directly. Now, I do have the Patreon support, and like I said at the top of this, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the Patreon support, but I will get slightly more generic here, and you can adjust this based on the assumptions and your part of the world, but in my part of the world... So if you combine YouTube plus sponsorships plus Amazon plus Patreon, then I make approximately enough to pay for health insurance for my family. And I did some research. I am in the United States. And this seems to be in the same ballpark as if I were paying for my own health insurance plan in Germany. So uh, take that for what you will. Now, the indirect things are how I actually make a living. That is the book sales and the training and contracting revenue that I make, which I already told you I was not going to go into the specifics about. But I think that pretty well covers the health and status of the channel. Now, it did take me 90 months to get to 100,000 subscribers. I believe I misspoke and made a miscalculation here. Um, on this revenue when I said that this was 80 months. It's actually 90 months, so this should be more like $66, which adjusts that down to about $276 per month. So anyhow, I thought that you would find this interesting. Again, like I said, I don't find that a lot of people talk about the specifics of their channel. Uh, this is where this channel is. In case you happened to think well, ooh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and I'm going to become rich and famous. It doesn't really work that way. Most YouTubers, as I understand it, make money off of all of the side things that they do. They don't really make a whole lot of money from YouTube. Now, to be fair, if the episodes that I released got 60 or 600,000 views, then I would be making somewhere between 10 and 100 times what I am making. But they simply don't. This is the downside of working in a niche field such as C++ videos. And I think this also specifically limits the growth of the channel and illustrates why things have stayed pretty flat. Now, I could make more, and basically it comes down to views means money. Subscribers don't mean money. So, how to make more money? Uh, basically, I would have to use more clickbait. I Every now and then, I kind of go down this road a little bit, and let's just take a quick look at that. If we just take a quick look at views, we can see something like a title of The Important Parts of C++20 gets nearly twice as many views as C++23's Lambda attributes. Lambda-only programming, which was fun and a little bit tongue-in-cheek, got twice as many views as my discussing the fact that you need to learn other programming languages to be a better C++ programmer. And you can see this kind of pattern repeating. If I make a bold claim in the title 
or some sort of weird thing that makes you question the reality as you know it about C++, then I get about twice as many views as if I don't do those things. Well, anyhow, I'll leave the video here. I hope you found this interesting and enlightening and learned something from this video and maybe gave you some basis for what to expect if you start your own YouTube channel. It did take me 90 months to get here, so it was definitely not a quick process for this channel. Anyhow, leave your comments with your thoughts below and I will see you next week. Thank you.